Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week, I'm in Jacksonville. I'm looking for big bull reds and flounder. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forms for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together, we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's done for now. In this episode, I team up with Steve Crowder, a.k.a. Morocco Madness, in Jacksonville Beach in the northeast section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We hit the deep water for big bull reds and head to shallow water for flounder. Look at that monster. Look that at is going to be my Good biggest God. red ever. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. At first light, I launched the Trident and met up with Steve, a.k.a. Morocco Madness. We loaded the gear and headed out to our first spot. What's that in the cabin, Good morning, George. man. Nice to meet you, bud. Come on, let's do this. Heading out, I realized why we'd come back to Jacksonville Beach. This isn't our first trip for real time here. And you know, seeing these beautiful Spartina marshes, I realized that this place has some beauty. Once again, though, in Florida, weather is going to be an issue. We have some scattered thunderstorms that we're going to deal with, but I'm tell you what, it made for a beautiful sunrise. Steve's plan was to get out the inlet at first light and try to get on the tail end of this fall mullet migration pattern. You know, he said there had been a lot of sharks and tarpon blowing up on these mullets that are migrating down the beach, but unfortunately, seas were too rough. We had a thunderstorm that was rolling in. We decided not to make the trip out there, turn inside, and head in short of fish. We decided to head up inside the Mayport Inlet, up into the St. John's River, and target these big bull reds. This is the reason why I came. These are the posts that I saw. These guys are catching giant redfish on the bottom, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet of water. Dodging the weather a little bit this morning, had some rain showers. We got here first light. Steve Crowder, AKA Morocco Madness, the Northeast section of Florida Sportsman Forum. I saw in your post you've been catching these big bull reds. This is not light tackle. We're in 40 feet of water. Soak some baits on the bottom. Yeah. Big bulls. Big bulls, man. We're looking at uh, anywhere from 38 to possibly even 50 inches. Oh, I've fish. never caught a bull a red that size. So. They're here, man. There's some monsters. There was some big ones caught at the tournament yesterday up around 50 inches. So, so big bull reds, 40, yeah. 40 feet of water, soaked the bottom. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna send down some uh, some chunked up blue crab and uh, some cut up mullet. I'm excited. Yeah, Should let's be, get it. Let's get them, man. Let's do it. We got anchored up on the edge of a channel, got set up, and this is the reason why I came, Big Bull Reds. Yeah, I'm not used to fishing this kind of current, man. This current is hauling. You got several knots of current in here, anchored up in 40 feet of water. You better bring some line. It's kind of like a, uh, like a grassy, gravelly bottom. Really? Yeah, believe it or not, it is. You wouldn't think it is, but that's what it's got. It's like almost like a live bottom. 40 feet of water. Yep. You said this is a rig that you're using. We're going a little heavier, obviously, because it's you know deep water. We're using uh, 80 pound spider wire today with these torques. Three way swivel, you said. Three way swivel, yeah. And it's just you know a decent section of uh, 60 pound fluoro and a big old you know 70 troke car. Nice. And just get it to the bottom. Let's sit down there. Sit, just let it sit and uh, just kind of wait. We'll set up a spread of rods. Probably uh, today we'll just go with three since the current's kind of smoking. And uh, we'll send down a variety of baits. We'll go down, we'll set, up, set a couple of them up with cut bait since that seems to be the ticket here lately. We'll send one out with a, with a chunked up blue crab and uh, we'll just kind of wait for them to hit. We've been marking them on the finder. You can see them right now. They're just smoking through. All right, I'm ready so, to get one down. Let's get it. All right, so this is the bait choice today. Mullet, blue crabs. That's right. Mullet, blue crabs, and we'll just cut them into steaks on the, on the mullet. We'll be cutting them up into steaks, hooking them through the skin, and then on the mullet, or uh, on the blue crab, I'll uh, chunk them up into halves. We'll take all the limbs off them. And There's some hunkers there, boy. Yeah, you need them, man. We'll just uh, we'll split them right down the center. All right, let's get some baits out. I'm all ready. Right. All right, let's do it. Just drop it straight down. Toss it out back a little ways, back there and just kind of let it go. I'm going to send one out this way over here. So you got two mullet out, we can put a crab out as well? Big yep. blue crab? Yep. What we do, peel the trap door off. We'll go ahead and dress it up to uh, be broken in half and used as bait on the bottom. So bust off the legs real quick. 
get rid of the claw, get rid of all this stuff. And you see these two openings where the front legs used to be? Use those as leverage points. Crack the carapace off. Oh, wow. Toss that. Be real gentle with one of the leg, leg posts there, where the knuckle is, because that's where my entry point's gonna be for the, uh, for the hook. So what I'll do is I'll take the thorax, snap it, got two baits. Now I'll take this, go through, through a leg joint, like so, run it through, and then pop it out through the hard, through the hard shell of the bottom of the thorax. So it won't pull. That's it, man. Cool. It's simple. This segment brought to you by Ray Marine Marine Electronics. Take the easy route with Ray Marine. When you fish competitively for a living, you need sonar you can trust. I switched to Raymarine Chirp Sonar to give me incredible underwater vision. I switched to Raymarine Chirp Sonar to see structure so sharp and fish targets so clear it's like reality. So don't lose faith in your sonar again. Make the switch to Chirp and Raymarine Visionality and see the real world below. So Jacksonville Beach, this area is known for its giant bull reds. There's not many places in the state that you can get 50 inch redfish, but this is the spot to come to. You know, this deep water, these inlets, this is the place that these big breeder, big breed stock gets. And I know, you know, we'll have a great chance to hook in one of these big fish today. It didn't take long. Steve had the first bite of the morning, you know, probably five minutes into it. Unfortunately, that hook pulled. Oh, oh. Gone? Gone, man. He's gone. We ain't been sitting out here long and we just got bit. Here we go. Come on, baby. Oh! It's only a matter of time before one came around. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> they got some tug on them. Yeah, they got some serious power. Oh my. Goodness. I'll keep an eye on it. If, uh, if he starts cutting over this way, I'll uh, start pulling these out of the way. Oh, there you go. Better bring some tackle when you come up here. Yeah. <laughs> you got your hands full, man. <laughs> what you got, George? Oh, I got a stud. Well, we've been fishing for about 15 minutes. It didn't take long. That's uh, our second one. Lost second the other bite. one. Yeah. They're here. There yeah, he is. That's going to be my biggest red ever. Look at that monster. Look that at is going to be my Good biggest God. red ever. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Things got a broom tail on it. <laughs> I look caught at some it. redfish, but that. That is a bruiser, isn't it? That's full grown right there. Come here, baby. How's, <laughs> how's that for a redfish, man? How do you like that, George? That is. That is a beast. That's probably about a 40 inch red right there. God, that's why I came this whole way. Jacksonville bull reds. Biggest one I ever caught. Look at the, God. Look at the girth on that thing, Things man. A stud. Whoo, full grown. They're Let's exhausting. Get this one back in the water. And. Woo. Oh my God, that thing will wear here, you out. Nice job, nice fish. As you can see, there's no shortage of company. We're out here on a weekend though, so really on a weekend, this ain't too bad. It's kind of what you expect. There's gonna be some other boats out here. FWC just rolled by us, and apparently, uh, good to know, you're not allowed to anchor in the channel. So as you can see, we're right on the edge. These guys are a little over. They may get a little heat here this morning. You wanna stay out of the channel though. You don't wanna obstruct navigation ever. It's okay to drift in the channel while you're fishing, but to anchor up in the channel, if you're obstructing navigation's problem. Rules of the road. What's going on is he's got a large school of males that are working their way along the channel ledge, swimming in large circles, looking for females. And they'll be, you might catch 10 males to every, maybe every 10 fish being a female. The big ones females? Or? The big ones are the females, man. When you get a big 40, like mid 40s, upper 40s, 50 inches, it's probably 90% of the time it's gonna be a giant female. But uh, it's, it's, it's all 
it's all boys. And they're up here swimming in circles all along this ledge on both sides of the shoulder all the way down towards all the feeder creeks and estuaries. Oh, yeah. This isn't one we wanted to hit in the, in the current. <laughs> this is a big fish. This is a real big fish, actually. <sighs> yeah, you definitely don't want to show up out here with anything like 4,000 series <laughs> or 5,000. Is all you'll do, you'll probably land them, but you'll kill them. You want to get these guys in as quick as you can so you can get a safe release on them where they'll live. We don't want to send them floating down river upside down. So get them in quick as you can. Heavy tackle, heavy drag. Oh boy. Yeah, this is a big fish. It might be bigger than the last one. Oh boy. You think oh. you, you hooked up? <laughs> Look at that, boy. Double trouble, son. Oh. What you got, boss? <laughs> I was getting ready to put a glove on to help you land yours. I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Just worry about your fish. I can handle it. Two ones. Double header. That's right. Sitting out here for like 30 minutes, nothing. Then all of a sudden, just school must have swam through. Remember what I said earlier? Then all it starts to slow down just a little bit. Yeah, Steve was saying slide, tide slackens up and the bite turns on. Look at this thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what we got here? What we got here? <laughs> Another full grown one. Another monster. Not as big as I thought, but big. Come on, baby, come on. Woo! <sighs> my, oh my. I wish I could help you, but my hands are full. Get it. That's what it's all about, man. Get it while it's happening. There she goes. <laughs> Wow, look at that. <laughs> that one ain't too bad. Bring that one over. God, you can hear that thing drumming away. Oh, see, this one is definitely color different. Yeah, he's dark. He's back up in the creek. Yeah, he just came out from the creeks to do a little mating. That's yeah. exactly what happened. <laughs> wonder how they get the name drum. Look at all the spots on this one. Look at that tail. Look at that broom. We had one on, and you can tell they run in schools. Got this one on, had another one come right up at the same time. <clears throat> oh. sure good that one's ready to go. What do you say, man? We got three big bull reds. We could probably sit in here and just stroke them all day long. I know. It's there's this, there's plenty of them here. We, I mean, we got three, like uh, you're saying, man. That's plenty. I'm happy with the three. I say we go get some diversity, maybe hit a flounder or something else, see what else you Man, got here. I'll tell you, I would love to get you guys on some big doormats. Hey. Let's go get one. I hate to leave fish that are feeding, but you know what? There's no sense to keep beating them up. We let's, got a couple. Let's do it. Do let's something do it. different. This segment is brought to you by PowerPole. Swift, silent, secure. C.A. Richardson here for PowerPole, where every shallow water anchor is designed and tested to be extremely quiet. How quiet? Let's take a look. Hey, guys. Great work, guys. Don't slam the door. PowerPole, deadly silent to help you catch more fish. So we caught those big bull reds and we're ready to move on, try something different. Talking to Steve, he said flounder was the possibility. The interesting thing about these fish is that they migrate up and down the river depending on the time of the year. He said this time of the year, they're way up the river, up by the city. We had decided to make the run. But let me tell you, what a change in scenery. You go from beautiful Spartina marshes to like downtown, you know, industrial. This is something new to me. I'm not used to this type of waterway, but he said this is where the flounder are. These flounder here year round too? Uh, you know, they are here year round, yeah, definitely. But uh, it's just the uh, the density of how many, you know, it changes. Right now we're going through a good flounder run. Uh, what happens is the migration starts out in all the feeder creeks uptown and all over the St. John's River. 
And then uh, after the first cold front that blows through uh, at the start of fall, they start to migrate and make a trip towards the inlet to get ready to go offshore. And eventually, uh, sometime around November, early December, they start making their trip out there and they'll be gone. All the big ones will be offshore spawning. Got one? Yeah, there's one on there. Got some weight to it, but... Is that the right hard. one? It's a, it's a flounder. Not there a giant, but he's, ah, a he's legal though. A little flatty. Here we go. That'll work. All right. They get a lot bigger than that around here though, don't they? Oh man, this is, this is, uh, it's not necessarily a baby, but it's not a big one though. Yeah. No. Here you go. All right, so let me get one now. All we're throwing is uh, I'm, I'm tossing out some four inch Berkeley Gulp on a quarter ounce Berkeley Gulp jig head, all white. Just kind of bouncing them up in there in between the pilings, fishing the flats, then grass edges and stuff on the way up here. Slow retrieve, you know. Creeping like across else. the bottom. Yeah, just kind of bouncing. If you're not touching, if you're not in constant contact with bottom here, you're really not, you're not fishing for flounder. So how long have you been fishing around here? Uh, most of my life, uh, just not most of my life from a boat. <laughs> yeah, shore base for a while there? Yeah, a long time. Landlocked. Yeah. Long time. I actually just got my first boat two years ago. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah I started off fishing the, fishing the surf and the beach, piers, and, uh, and then I went from that to fishing out of a kayak, hitting the creeks. I'll tell you what, though, you can fish from land and catch fish, and you get a boat, and it's, yeah. it's on. I mean, we all start that way, some way from land, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this area is pretty diverse between the Spartina marshes and the so commercialized back in here, then back into you know back into the city. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah. You got the ocean nearby, so there's a lot of diversity in these rivers. So the flounder fishing today was just off. I don't know. We went to Steve's, every one of his favorite spots. We were downtown, shipyards, boat yards. We went everywhere. I don't know. Just the bite wasn't happening. We decided to call it a day, head down to Jacksonville Beach, and get some dinner. So we went out and had some drinks, some dinner. You know, we had talked about the plan for the following day. Steve was confident he could put us on fish for the following day. You know, we had prefrontal, there was a this big front coming through, the weather was clear, we knew we were gonna get an opportunity in the morning. He thought the flounder would be chewing at first light. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger keeps ice longer. I'm going to talk to you about jig fishing. You know, for this Jacksonville show, we really utilize the jigging technique, but there's some subtle differences when you're choosing your jig heads that I want you to take into consideration. You know, for this trip, I use anything from an eighth ounce to a quarter ounce to a three eighth ounce jig head. And how I chose which jig head I was going to use depended upon how deep of water I was fishing and how fast the current was moving. Really what I wanted to consider though, I needed to get that bait down to the bottom. When you're flounder fishing up here, the bait needs to be on the bottom. If I'm fishing one to two feet of water, I can get away with an eighth ounce jig head, but anything, you know, four, five, six, almost eight, 10 feet of water we were fishing at times, I went to a heavier jig head, you know, a three eighths ounce jig head, what that enabled me to do is really drag that bottom. So paired up with this three eighths ounce jig head in deeper water, I was able to, you know, just drag the shrimp right across the muddy bottom. And when I'm red fishing, I can go to something even lighter. You know, this eighth ounce jig head with a three inch gulp shrimp is perfect along these Spartina marshes. You know, one to three feet of water, I can still make a long cast, and I can fish this effectively by bouncing the bottom for red fish in that shallower water. Another thing that you want to consider is the amount of current. If I'm back here in these marshes, there's not a lot of tidal flow, I can get away with a lighter jig head. Heavy current, you know, along the inlets and channels, I may need a bigger jig head to get down to the bottom in that heavy current. So just make sure you take into consideration the depth of your water and the amount of current flow when you're choosing the correct jig head.
So we're back at one of the spots from the previous day. We had no luck prior, but Steve was confident this is where they were. He'd been catching them here. You know, wouldn't you know, a couple casts into it, Steve hooks his first flounder. Better nice. fish here. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I might be wrong. It's, it was pretty good at first, but never mind. It's a flounder, though. It's That's a flounder. That's what we're looking for. So it's going to be 12 inches to keep. 12 inches, yep. Look how cool that thing is. Yeah. So camouflage. Just sit there on the bottom. Here we go. Another one. Now, this is a bigger flounder. Come on this side of me here. <sighs> Still not a big one, but it's bigger than that last one by quite a bit. So I don't know what was different about this day. You know, obviously the weather conditions were changing. This front was just getting ready to pass through, but we're sitting in the same exact area. We made, you know, 50 to 100 casts the day before with no bites. Now it's just, you know, doesn't take much and we're catching these flounder. He gets another one, you know, it wouldn't take long. And you know what? I get one too. All right, good job, George. I got me a flounder. You sure do. A really, ooh, a nice one too. That's a nice flounder. Get him up here. <laughs> oh, good job, George. I caught one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's a nicer fish too. It's funny because I didn't even feel the bite, but my line started just went. swimming off to the side. Exactly. And hit... you, you know, you felt those breaks. It just all yeah. of a sudden kind of stopped. That's him. Man. That's how they do. You don't really feel a nibble or nothing. This is pretty exciting. You wouldn't think this type of fishing, these smaller fish, but you know, these are all good keeper size, great eating fish. You know, and then Steve gets another one, and this is a good one. Oh boy, he's bending some line now. Oh, this might be bigger than I thought it was actually. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> oh yes. We need a net for this one. Do y'all have one? Yeah. Got it. Look at that thing. How's that for a flounder? That is a flounder there. What a good fish. Yeah, that's a better that's fish. That's a meaty fish. I'll tell you, Jacksonville Beach did not disappoint again. This is our uh, second or third time up here. We love coming here. These marshes, these areas are beautiful. These big bull reds, first time I've ever gotten those big bull reds. Biggest bull red of my life. Big old flounder, you know, some variety. Great fishery. Appreciate you showing it to us. Dude, I'm glad y'all had fun. Oh, this was great. Yeah. Man, let me tell you. Just glad this, I'm glad I didn't disappoint. <laughs> Jacksonville <laughs> Beach, bull reds and flounder. So Steve Crowder, AKA Morocco Madness, showed me Jacksonville's best red fishing and flounder fishing. This Northeast section of the Florida Sportsman Forum never disappoints. It was because of his posts, his reports that I chose him to fish with. Keep your reports coming and I may fish with you next on Real Time, Florida Sportsman. The Morocco Madness. <laughs> the Hawaiian music comes on, I can just see it. <laughs> if I was a flounder, I would be right there. Yeah! Man, that takes skill. Get the bogo grip. You're gonna net. That thing's a giant. 